Good morning. Hi, Peter. Hello. It's me. Today is Friday. Ah, I love me Fridays. Today is Friday, November 3rd, 2023. And we're going to a service call, a uh, no heat service call, down the block from our old shop. And the first time customer, the question is, her first name is Stephanie. Let's play a game of hot or not. Is she gonna be hot or not? Okay, Peter's got his money on not. I got my money on, on hot. Let's go see. Hello. Hi, good morning, is this Stephanie? Hi, this is Mike from the Pipe Doctor. Oh, uh, you know? Yes. Okay, all right. Okay, I'll be on. Okay, thank you. Okay. Bye. Well, she definitely sounds sleepy. <laughs> I'm going straight to hell, by the way. She sounds Latina-ish, right? Latina-ish? Nah. She sounds like... An accent of some sort. That was just like the, the I'm sleepy uh, sound. I'm going straight to hell though. <laughs> God help me. Let's see, where's yeah. your thermostat? Yeah. Well, the thermostat is, you know, I dropped it. You dropped the thermostat? Yeah. No, it's, yeah. I dropped it. Oh. I bought a new one. Okay. Yeah. But I just bought, I dropped it the other day. And then it stopped working? But it the wasn't heat? working actually when, oh. two weeks ago, Two weeks ago, I already, I turned it on. Okay, and it worked? The, the, uh, the, you heat? Know, the heat? Yeah, it, it was working. Okay. And then... Where's yeah. your new one? Oh, yeah, I can. Okay. Peter, want to grab a tool bag? Mm. We'll start with the thermostat first. Yeah. All right, so the new thermostat uses two AA batteries. Here's our RH, and here's our W. And... All right, the boiler just kicked on. We have no resistance, no resistance, no res uh, resistance, no resistance, and no resistance. So two of the three zones are calling. However, however, we don't have boiler operation. I tried it last night. Yeah, so all three are on. So this is probably going to be... Oh, you have three zones. Basement, first floor, second floor. They're all ice cold and there's no heat. We have a Burnham gas-fired boiler. Three zone valves, one circulator. All three are calling, or we're calling. Mm -hmm. There's no resistance in the zone valves. Let's replace the thermostat since it fell on the floor. And then we'll check that stuff. So we have a giant hole in this wall. Peter's trying to get that red wire into the red terminal. You have to, you have to straighten out that edge. See how it's a little bent? I know it's bent for her pleasure, but... Now you can shove that bad boy in there. Good. Now, I wanted to put those on first because if you put that... Yeah, like right there. Change the old screech. Oh, are they giantly long? Not giantly, but... That's giantly. She, okay. She, she okay. Send her home. Good. And let's get another one right there, I guess. Here. There's no other spot in there for it. Yeah, get one right there. Okay. Thermostat's sets on the wall. 57 degrees. Set to 70. Heat is on. The heat is on. That's Alright, to help us identify which of these zone valves is for the first floor. Alright, because there's resist no resistance on any of them. I sent Peter back to the thermostat and we're gonna turn off that zone by taking it off the wall and it's this one this is first floor so now we've identified that this zone is our first floor zone and it actually looks like end switch is working it looks like end switch is working because the damper closed now it's back on 
All right. And we even had that click of the, the fan center relay when the end switch re-energized or closed when you put the thermostat back on the wall. So we have the click of the, of the relay on the fan center. Our damper is opening. It's open already now, but we don't have a call. Sorry, what I, sorry, what I meant to say is we don't have boiler operation. So let's take the front cover off and see what's going on. Push up there and then pull at the bottom. Okay. Well, it's a good thing we're here because the combustion plate, combustion shaver plate is off. And do we have a pilot light? Nope. We don't have a pilot. So let's try relighting the pilot. First, first thing I'm gonna do is turn off the switch. I'm gonna take this plate out of the way. And keep in mind, be careful with this because if it's on, there's 24 volts there. You don't want to short out the transformer. So here's our gas valve. It's set the. Someone's trying to relight it. Look at this. It's set the pilot right now. See, this is what I. And I would love it when people just tell you, "Hey, listen, this is what we've done." Blah 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 blah. Yeah. Um, that's why it's always important to ask the questions. When's the last time the boiler was serviced? Any maintenance? Any? When's the last repair? Has anyone done anything recently? I always ask those questions, which I neglected to do when we walked in the door. Or I was too busy worrying about hot or not contest for a you know an older woman. <laughs> She's kind of hot though. <laughs> All right, pushing down the plunger. Let's see if we can relight. Peter, light this pilot. Is it sparking? It sparks. But nothing's coming out, huh? Interesting. All right, hold on. Because I don't even hear the gas coming out of the pilot tubing. Let's get the, uh, our seven, our five, our three eighths and five, seven sixteenths. Let's remove that pilot burner tubing. Okay, now push down on the red plunger and see if we have any gas coming out of there. Yeah, we do. See if you can blow through that. Yes. Yeah. Yes, no? No. No, huh? There's, yeah. There is resistance. Yeah, it doesn't want you to... Has someone tried to... Re uh, someone recently work on this? No, no. No one was here? No one, you know, no, tried to light the pilot? Know, no, the other day, like... Before it gets cold, really, last night. Yeah. I turned it on the the the, the, yeah, the that was loose. The pilot. The pilot. It lit. It, it lit. Yeah, and then last night I tried, and then it, it's just a little. Mm, little okay. Yeah. Let's pull the let's pull the two burn uh, the burner out for the pilot burner and mm -hmm. see if we could uh, see what's going on. All right. See so when you, when you blow through, something happens. There you go. So what I did was I sucked on it first and then blew out of it. So let's try to um oh, pilot burner look. Alright, let's see. Let's see what happens. Let's put that back in. I'm gonna get criticized for not replacing it, but we're well, using an orifice cleaning tool. All in. There's a tip of the pilot right there. Good. All right. Unroll a little bit of that. And let's put it back in there. A little rust and dirt in there. Hmm. Let's see if we have a little uh, dust. All right. So we cleaned out the inside of the boiler, the combustion chamber. Putting all the burners back in. And we're going to reconnect our gas and our pilot. Let's clean this up a little bit. So... That's our pilot. And if I was replacing the tubing, I'd probably make this a little more neat in appearance.
Okay. This one. Okay. Gonna tighten those up. Thermocouple and the pilot tubing. All right, nice blue flame. You can see that the tip of the thermocouple is in that blue flame. Hold this down for about a minute, and hopefully, the magnet inside the gas valve on the pilot valve inside this gas valve will be will hold down or be held open by the small millivolt charge that is being sent from that flame through the thermocouple into the gas valve. So right now we're pushing in that, that plunger or that valve and we're spring loaded. So as long as there's enough voltage to hold in the magnet, hold it open, when I let go of it like this, it'll stay on just like that. Okay, so now we're gonna put this cover back on, the combustion plate back on. Fire. One thing to keep in mind, these two wires on the rollout switch, just make sure that they're away from the base, you know, the, that silver part, because it'll melt. All right, Peter, let's flip the power on. Oh, actually, first, let's put this two on. And now fire up. So first order of operation. Our damper is closing because it was in the open position when the power was turned off. Our zone valves closed. Now they're open and the, the motor activated uh, the, the little lever. The lever pushed against the end switch. The end switch then is TT on the boiler. And as long as our low water cutoff, which is right there, which doesn't look like it's in the best of shape by the way, is good. And then we'll have ignition. There we go. Houston, we have ignition. On this, burn them. 206, wow. Talk about grossly oversized, 164,000 BTU gas fired boiler. Grossly oversized. This is a 100,000 BTU home, but that's what plumbers do. They oversize because they think they're doing the customer a favor. All right, so to finish up the service call, we drilled a hole approximately six inches off the top of the boiler. Uh, in the flue pipe below the draft diverter. You don't want to do it above the draft diverter or after the draft diverter um, because then it'll be diluted with the air needed to for draft to go up the chimney. Um, stack temperature 402 and rising CO, uh, O2 of 8 point and dropping 25 particles per million of carbon dioxide, 81.2% efficient. I'm taking a visual account of this right there that is leaking. This is a one by three quarter copper T with a female adapter. This is bad. That needs to be replaced. Our expansion tank, which is over there, also near end of life because our pressure gauge is probably not even accurate, but it is I'm reading 32 PSI. Our relief valve is right here. Make note of its size and rating, making sure this is the correct one. Yep, that says 30 PSI on it. So this is a good relief valve. Um, this is a good relief valve as well. Temperature and pressure, 110 degrees, or two, um, sorry, 210 degrees, 150 PSI. I'm missing the drip leg though. If you're standing here, this thing um, pops off. Well, good luck to you. We clipboarded the data, 457 degrees on the stack temperature. Now we're going to do a draft measurement. Zero out for 11 seconds. And then we're going to put that pro back into the hole and make sure we have good draft. All right, so again, halfway into the six inch flue pipe, we have great negative pressure. Sorry about the glare guys. Oh, there it is, boom. That looks good, very, very One nice. observation, these two zone valves have no resistance, right? But they don't turn on the boiler. So both these zone valves are open, are calling from the thermostat. However, the first floor zone valve and switch is the only one that actually controls the boiler. So, if you could for future reference, we'll make the customer aware that only the first floor controls actual the operation of the boiler. As long as these are open when the first floor is on, 
circulator is running, and that's why all the other, the two other zones will get heat. The way to replace this, of course, after verifying that the wires are connected properly, would be to replace both zone valves because the end switches are bad. Pretty decent service call. We secured a new maintenance agreement client um, where a customer pays a set amount every month, uh, and it's good to cancel. And we come once a year for a tune-up, and any repairs throughout the duration of the plan, you don't pay a chip charge, and you don't pay our full retail rate. So you pay a discounted rate on, on labor, a discounted rate on parts. And the best thing uh, is that when we come for a tune-up, this is where I built some value with her, right? I told her when, when we're there for a tune-up, if you need any repairs on the system, you're not paying anything for labor. So for example, she needs a new lower to cut off and, the, and those fittings uh, replaced and then put back together. She's only paying for the parts, right? The same thing with the expansion tank. That needs, she needs a new expansion tank. It's almost end of life. The, the pressure uh, tridicator gauge is reading a little over 35 PSI. I'm sure it's not accurate because the relief valve isn't dripping. Uh, but I planted the seed ahead. Listen, if we, if we replace these parts when we're here for a tune-up, you're not paying anything extra for labor. It's a win-win. But well, the best thing that stuck out of my head, I think you were, you were, you were in the truck for it when you get the test out, was that um, your, your office down the block, right? She said, I was like, actually after 12 years, we moved out of the neighborhood. We're in Woodmere now. He goes, oh, but I also watch you on YouTube. Really? Yeah. And that, uh, that, that really, she goes, I'm a subscriber. And I don't mean to, I'm not, hope I'm not being mean and, and, and imitating her, her, um, accent. her accent. But it was pretty cool, I love it, you know? So, forget about being right down the block. We're here because she watches my videos on the Mikey Pipes YouTube channel, like you are right now. And you may not even realize you haven't done so already, but hit that subscribe button, guys. Hit that subscribe button. We're almost at 150,000 subscribers, almost. 149,000, I think like 590. Right We're right there. We're right there, we're a sea hair away. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. It's Friday. Love me Fridays. Hope you love your Fridays as well. Have a great weekend. Hug your kids. Be well. God bless. Stay safe. And smash that thumbs up.